The coalition primary vote was 36.7% in a survey, compared to 39% at the last election, while the Labour primary vote was 32.5% in the survey compared to 35.4% at the last election. When respondents were asked to nominate their primary votes and their preferences, the Reachdell survey showed the coalition ahead on 53% against Labour on 47%. This is a significant swing on the result at the July 2016 election, when Labour won by 50.8% against the coalition on 49.2% in two-party terms. Labour MP Susan Lamb admitted her dual citizenship and resigned from federal parliament this week. Photo, Alex Ellinghausen, former Labour MP, Susan Lamb, defeated former Liberal member Wyatt Roy in 2016 but she resigned from federal parliament on Thursday after admitting her dual citizenship in the past meant she was not eligible to sit in parliament. Ms Lamb is hoping to complete the renunciation of her British citizenship in time to contest the by-election but the coalition is yet to select a candidate, suggesting it faces an uphill battle despite the Reachdell survey results. The government has a slim majority of 76 seats out of 150 in the lower house but is hoping to reclaim the South Australian electorate of Mayo, previously a liberal stronghold, and taking its majority to 77. It is not counting on victory in Longman. History shows that a government has only won a federal by-election from the opposition party once since Federation. When told the government's tax cuts would cost $140 billion over a decade, a majority of voters said they wanted the money spent on other issues. While 19.2% said they preferred the tax cuts, 28.8% said the money should be used to reduce the deficit and paid on debt and another 43.5% said they preferred the money to go on infrastructure and services like health and education. This was also reflected among coalition voters, with 25.6% supporting the income tax cuts while 35.8% preferred to reduce the deficit and 29.4% preferred the spending on services and infrastructure. Opinion polls have shown for more than a year that voters are divided on the government's cuts to company taxes. A Fairfax, Ipsos poll in April found 49% of respondents supported the policy compared to 44% in March last year. The Richdell survey did not ask about the overall company tax reform, which seeks to reduce the tax rate from 30 to 25% for all companies and starts with small and medium businesses, but instead emphasized big companies, should the rate of company tax for large companies be increased, kept the same or decreased, the survey asked. This produced a result that showed 40.3% of voters wanted the rate increased, 36.9% wanted it kept the same and 17% wanted it cut, while 5.8% were undecided. Australia Institute Executive Director Ben Oakwist said this showed the company tax cuts were deeply unpopular.